Hey guys, this is Bharat and welcome to Bharat's Kitchen with how to make good samosas. That's right. Now before starting anything, I'd like to tell you that the pastry of samosa is basically on the concept of puff pastry. So I'm gonna begin with some all-purpose flour and generous amount of oil. Now oil and cold water will make this dough crumbly and flaky which is very very important while making the samosa pastry. To that, I'm gonna add some carom seeds and some salt. Now the next part is the most crucial part while making a good samosa. So I'm gonna mix the oil thoroughly throughout the flour and this literally took me 5 minutes to the second. After mixing the oil with flour thoroughly, you'll notice that the color of the flour would change from white to a pale yellowish kind of a color and when you'll try to combine the flour, it'll behave something like this. Alright, so after mixing all the oil together with the flour, I'm gonna try and make a well in the center of the bowl and then I'm gonna add some cold water in batches. Now to make the samosas perfect, I want you to follow all the measurement precisely because making a good firm dough is the key to make a good samosa. So right now I've added one fourth of a cup of water and I'm going to try to combine it with the flour and as I've told you earlier I'm going to add water in batches. So I'm going to add the next one fourth of a cup of cold water and again try to combine and form a firm and a very tight dough. At this point I'm going to transfer my dough to a flat surface and add the final batch of cold water which is one sixteenth of a cup of water and knead the crumbly dough until it all comes together into a ball. Now when you combine the dough, you'll notice that the dough is pretty hard to work with. I mean in life it's harder to impress a woman, which believe me is impossible. So if you compare it with that, the dough is pretty workable. Now in case you're wondering why I've added such less and precise amount of water, for that you have to read my blog post for the longer answer. But in short, if you'll add more and more water or moisture to work with the dough, your samosas will have lots of small air bubbles on the outside and they'll not be crumbly and flaky. So I'll just try to knead the dough and make it as smooth as possible. Now again I'd like to remind you that the dough is very firm and not at all stretchy. In fact if you try to poke it, your dough will not retract to its original position. So to make the dough stretchy we need to apply some science and develop gluten. For that we'll need to cover the dough with a wet cloth for at least 30 minutes. And don't worry I'll show you the difference later on in the video. So in the meanwhile you can prepare your stuffing. So for that firstly I'm gonna roughly chop some cashews, some cilantro and some raisin. And as I'm using frozen peas, I'm going to keep them in hot water for a little while. Then we're going to finally chop some green chilies. And finally for the stuffing, I'm going to make a particular spice mix for which I'm going to take some pomegranate seed, which is also known as anadana powder, some mango powder, which is also known as amjur powder, some garam masala, some rock salt, also known as kala namak, some cumin powder, also known as jeera powder, and mix it all together in a pestle. Now if you don't have these spices at your home, or the spices are hard to find, then don't worry, you'll find an alternative combination of spices in my blog post. Now I've taken some pre-boiled potatoes, so I boiled these potatoes the day before and kept them unpeeled, yes, unpeeled in the refrigerator overnight. So even though they're boiled, they're a bit firm, so I'm gonna peel them and cr crush them with the help of my thumbs and yes, this is the only and the right method to crush the potatoes for the samosas. Now sometimes you may have seen that people do not cook the potatoes and just add the spices and make the stuffing for the samosas. But for me, actually that's not the right thing to do. If you're wondering why, then let me tell you that boiled potatoes have excess of water present in them. So when heat is given for a prolonged period of time, a combination between excess water and starch present in the potatoes tend to make the potatoes totally into a mash, which is actually not the right thing to do. And that is why we need to cook the potatoes. So I'm going to take a pan on a very low flame and add some oil. To that, I'm going to add some asafoetida, which is known as hing, some cumin seeds, also known as jeera, some fennel seeds, also known as sof, and coarsely grinded coriander powder, also known as dhania powder. Then we're going to add some ginger garlic paste. And if you don't eat garlic, you can simply add ginger paste. We're going to stir it for a minute so that raw ginger and garlic is cooked. And then we're going to add our crushed potatoes and cook them for 2-3 to three minutes on low flame. So keep stirring so that all the spices and the ginger garlic paste gets incorporated with the potatoes. And then we're gonna add some red chilli powder, our finely cut green chilies, and some salt. Now after about a minute of adding salt, if you look closely like I have shown you in the video, the potatoes will start to release that excess moisture that I was earlier talking about. And therefore, you need to cook the potatoes for at least 5 to 7 minutes more. Alright, so after 5 minutes, we're gonna add our peas and cook for 2-3 minutes more on a low flame. 
and here you'll notice that the potatoes will soften a little bit and start to combine together. So at this point, we're gonna turn the flame off and add our cashews and raisins and mix everything together because there is still residual heat at the bottom of the pan. Now finally, I'm gonna add the spice mix that we made earlier and some chopped cilantro and combine everything together. So there you go, our stuffing for the samosas are ready and it should look something like this. So we're gonna wait for at least 15 to 20 minutes more for the stuffing to cool down and start making the samosa cones. So now we're gonna take the dough out of the damp cloth and due to moisture the dough would have become a little soft and much smoother. We're gonna knead the dough a little bit and try to roll it into a log and cut it into 8 equal sized discs. All right. Now let's start assembling the samosas. For that, first we need to roll these discs into circles. And if you remember earlier, when I poked the dough, it didn't retract it to its original position. But now, as soon as I squeeze the dough, it starts to contract. And that, my friends, is science. Okay, I'm just showing off. But this is the reason why earlier we kept the dough inside the damp cloth to basically develop gluten. Now we're just gonna roll our disc into a circle and don't try to make the circle very thin. Keep it to a medium size. Not very thin, not very thick. Then with the help of a knife or a dough cutter, we're gonna cut the circle into a half and make it into a semicircle. So apply some water on your fingers and apply that water to the straight part of the semicircle and join both the edges of the semicircle and just give it a pinch on the top so that it forms a cone like shape then just tap and squeeze tap and squeeze from the outside and the inside so that your samosas do not break and you'll achieve a perfect cone like this at this point we're gonna add the stuffing and you can add as much stuffing as you want because hey you're the king of the throne of your own samosa cones finally we're gonna squeeze the stuffing with the help of a spoon so that there is some space left at the bottom of the samosas which will help you to seal the deal with your samosas now we're gonna apply some more water at the bottom of the samosas and try to gently stick both the sides together but remember one thing here that to seal the samosas stretch only one side that is that side where there are no joints in the samosas and then just tap and squeeze tap and squeeze and finally with the help of your hands just gently make a bend at the bottom of the samosa such that it curves a little from the bottom and keep all your samosas at an upright position for at least 10 minutes. Now if you're thinking is this step important, well yes, it's because of this step your samosas will not burst open while you're frying them. Now to fry a samosa properly you need a big and deep utensil which has a big open mouth because a samosa needs to be cooked at a low heat so that it cooks throughout the inside. So turn your heat to medium low and when the oil is hot enough, dump in all your samosas together. Now a samosa needs a lot of time to cook properly. So keep stirring occasionally because it can take you up to 15 to even 20 minutes to cook the samosas properly. But do not turn your flame too high at any given point of time. Otherwise your samosas will not cook properly and they might be even raw. So we're gonna fry them until they're golden brown or until they look like this. Now you can clearly see that there are no big bubbles on the outside. And you can easily see the layers and how crumbly and flaky the samosa is. And trust me, it's packed with lots of flavors and that's how you make a good samosa. I'm gonna serve it with some tamarind chutney or imli chutney. And trust me, it's just divine. And there you go guys, how to make good samosas. If you like the video, do give it a thumbs up for updates and queries. Don't forget to like me on Facebook. Until then, I'll see you all next time.